Welcome to X-Girls, where we answer your questions about the impact of the sex industry and life after sex work. My name is Ashley Abercrombie, and I'm your host today. And I'm here with Harmony Dust, founder of Treasures, an outreach and support group to women in the sex industry based in the San Fernando Valley of LA. We also have Chrissy Moran, who works at Treasures as one of the peer mentors. And finally, we have Bronwyn Healy, founder of Hope Foundation in Australia, an outreach to women in prostitution. The great thing about these episodes is that we're answering your questions from the perspective of women who actually came out of the industry. Harmony is an ex-stripper, Chrissy is an ex-porn star, and Bronwyn is an ex-prostitute. And together, they are the ex-girls. Today's episode is actually about dating and men. I know from talking to you guys that one of the main things that comes up in the Treasure Support Group, Bronwyn, I don't know if it's the same in Australia, but is dating and relationships. So this episode, that's what we're going to be talking about. So what did your dating relationships look like when you were in the business? I was in one long-term abusive relationship, and I was pretty devoted to him, um, mostly out of fear, really. And that, that was my only experience. There was no physical intimacy, really. We had sex, but we didn't hug. Nothing, there was an, it wasn't an affectionate relationship. I wasn't treated well. I was, you know, told daily that I was worthless and no one would ever put up with me and no one would ever love me. And that's what my dating life looked like. Wow. <laughs> and he slept with other women. Oh, wow. I was in the industry for six years, so I, I dated a few different guys. Um, most of the relationships, they took over um, my business. They took, they would, um, you know, take over my website, take over my money, take over everything. And, um, yeah, and then one of the relationships um, was three and a half years, and it was very abusive. He um, mentally abused me, physically abused me, emotionally abused me um, for three and a half years. And, yeah, it, wasn't, it was very, very, very unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Mine was the same, and again, long-term relationship with a guy who had introduced me to heroin. So then when I had said, you know, I'm going to, I got fired from my regular job in the cinema and he said, you know, I was like, I'm going to enter the, you know, I'm going to ring and become a prostitute. He didn't stop me. He walked me to work that night. And two months later, we moved into the illegal brothel that I worked in and lived in one of the bedrooms and worked out of one of the other bedrooms. So he used to sit in the lounge room when I would walk through the lounge room with clients and I'd leave my money on the table and he would take it, but he wouldn't have considered himself my pimp. And I just thought he was my boyfriend, Mm. although he got half of, you know, all of the drugs that I took, half of all the money, you know, again, same thing, control without me even realizing that it was happening. Yeah, I didn't see my boyfriend as as my pimp at the time. I came home every night, first question, how much did you make? And I would have to, I would hand it over. And um, so then to save money, I started trying to make more than he thought I was going to make and then hiding that excess. But then when he found out about that, I ended up emptying out a safety deposit box, $10,000, handing him cash because um, he was my pimp, but I saw him as my boyfriend. Wow, it's it's devastating to me to even hear that this was the experience that you guys had in dating relationships. Bronwyn, you've said in several episodes, you know, that you were somebody's daughter. And I look at you guys and I'm like, oh, there's the precious women that you are and thinking about our viewers dealing with the same thing. It's devastating just to even think that people are in these kinds of relationships. So why do you feel like dating relationships, and maybe the history is what it is, but why are they so central to support groups for women that have been in the sex industry? I think because they're usually pretty dysfunctional. Mm. I work with some of the women in this support group, so I hear a lot of the stories. And I, from my own story, um, you know, I ended up in an abusive relationship for three and a half years, and I had no idea I would ever stay with somebody who abused me. Yeah. And I think as women, there's something kind of hardwired in us that desires to be pursued, de- desires relationship, desires totally. intimacy. And I feel like totally. we're kind of made for that. And even, yeah. you know, most of the time, those are things that that God himself, I found for me, wanted to meet those needs that I was looking for other people to meet. But at the same time, we are relational beings. And so figuring out how to navigate this desire, this kind of innate drive in us to be partnered, to be in relationship, to be intimate, but having, for me personally, no tools and no understanding of how to reach that, it's like, it's a struggle. So you leave the sex industry. I left the sex industry, but my patterns of relating to men didn't that was a process to un- unravel and change over time. 
That's great. This is a hot topic. And so next up, we're going to talk about how our panel viewed men while they were in the sex industry.